Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with a ZNL Power Calibration. In this presentation, we'll explain how to configure and perform a power calibration on a Rodian Schwartz ZNL Series Vector Network Analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of power calibration. We'll provide a short review in just a moment, but please see the separate presentation, Understanding VNA's Power Calibration, if you'd like a more detailed introduction to this topic. Let's start with a very brief review of power calibration. There are two general categories of VNA calibration. The first, and the most common, is system error correction, which is needed when making S-parameter or ratio type measurements. The second is called scalar power calibration, or simply power calibration. This type of calibration is needed when making some types of wave or power related measurements, such as measuring gain compression, or the 1 dB compression point. Like system error correction, power calibration is performed at defined calibration planes, and thus can correct for loss, gain, or frequency dependencies in the test setup. There are two general types of power calibration. Source calibration ensures the accuracy of both the source or stimulus power, as well as the accuracy of the measurement of this power. Receiver calibration on the other hand, ensures that the received power is being accurately measured. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll go through how to configure and run power calibration on Rodian Schwartz ZNL series vector network analyzers. To start a power calibration on the ZNL, press the Cal Hard key on the front panel and then select Power Cal from the calibration menu. Before continuing, it's important to ensure that power calibration is done using the same channel settings as those used for the actual measurement. For example, parameters such as frequency range, IF bandwidth, number of sweep points, etc. should be configured to match those that will be used during the post-calibration measurements. Changing any of these parameters after power calibration has been completed can result in a reduction of measurement accuracy. The Power Calibration GUI has four main areas. The Power Calibration Wizard, General Settings, Flatness Calibration Settings, and Power Meter Settings. Since source or reference receiver calibration requires the use of a power meter, let's start with Power Meter Settings. An external power meter is needed when performing source or reference receiver calibration. The ZNL supports most Rodian Schwartz NRP series power sensors, including both USB and LAN models. These sensors are configured under the Power Meter tab. Clicking on this tab brings up a list of connected power sensors. Scan instruments can be used to automatically detect attached power sensors. Or, Add Device can be used to configure them manually. Press the plus icon to the left of a power sensor to select it for use in power calibration. Zeroing the selected power sensor will improve sensor accuracy. Zeroing should be performed every few hours under normal conditions, but it's particularly important when measuring lower power signals or after a large change in the ambient temperature. To start the zeroing process, press Auto Zero and follow the prompts. The sensor must be disconnected from any source of RF power during zeroing, but in most cases, the ZNL will automatically abort the test if it detects the power is present at the sensor. The entire zeroing process typically takes only a few seconds. Under the general power calibration settings, the most important setting is calibration power, which defines the source power in dBm. We'll go into much more detail on this over the next few slides. The transmission coefficient settings are used to compensate or adjust for frequency-dependent behavior of devices in the test setup. This will also be covered in more detail shortly. The Switch Off Other Sources checkbox is simply used to ensure that only the calibrated source is on during calibration. CalPower defines the target calibration power. This is configured individually per port. To begin, the channel base power can be selected as either 0 or minus 10 dBm. 
This base power can then be changed using two different kinds of offsets. The first is the port power offset, which is simply used to modify the channel base power. The second is the cal power offset, which is used to specify the amount of gain, or attenuation, in the path between the ZNL output port and the device under test. We'll go through an example of this on the next slide. Note that the port power and offsets are displayed on a per port basis in the top left corner of this dialog. Let's walk through an example using offsets. Here, our device under test requires a constant input power of plus 25 dBm. And in order to reach this level, a preamplifier with a gain of 30 dB is placed between the ZNL and the device. We start by configuring a cal power offset of 30 dB to match the gain provided by the preamp. In order to obtain plus 25 dBm at the dot, the input to the preamp, that is the output power of the ZNL, must be minus 5 dBm. We therefore set the ZNL base power to minus 10 dBm and set the port power offset to 5 dB so that the actual ZNL output power is minus 5 dBm. Once power calibration is completed, the input to the device under test will be minus 5 plus 30 or plus 25 dBm. Underneath the channel base power settings is reference receiver cal power, which defines the source power used for the first calibration sweep in source power calibration. As we'll see a bit later in this presentation, an RF power meter, or sensor, is used during this first calibration sweep to calibrate the reference receiver. However, subsequent calibration sweeps can be performed using only the reference receiver, and reference receiver cal power defines the power level for these subsequent calibration sweeps. Note that by default, the reference receiver calibration power is set to the result of the port power calibration. Another way of modifying the calibration power is using transmission coefficients. These define the frequency-dependent characteristics of an additional two-port device in a test setup, and this in turn allows power calibration results to be modified to account for these devices. There are two different scenarios in which this can occur. The first is when a two-port device is normally connected to the dot, but is not present during power calibration. An example of this would be an on-wafer probe. The other scenario is when a two-port device is present and connected to the power meter during calibration. This would be the case if an adapter or attenuator were present in the test setup. In both of the cases above, these two port devices may have frequency-dependent attenuation, and this is defined using the respective two-port configuration dialogs. This information is given as a list of transmission coefficients that show power loss at different frequency values. Any values between these user-entered points are extrapolated. Lists can be created manually using the insert key, or they can be loaded from and saved to an external file. The final set of configurable parameters are those for flatness calibration, and these parameters control the calibration algorithm. Max iterations limits the number of calibration sweeps, and tolerance defines the maximum allowable deviation of measured power from calibration power. The iterative power calibration routine will stop once either max iterations is reached or when the deviation of measured power is less than the tolerance value. Convergence defines the allowable change in power correction for each flatness calibration sweep. More specifically, this is the step size relative to the amount of deviation from the desired power level. This value should be reduced if the calibration or convergence fails. Although these parameters allow fine control over the flatness calibration procedure, in most cases the default values will not need to be changed. Now that we've defined the important parameters, the last step is choosing the power calibration method. The default method is reference receiver after, which means that a power meter is used for the initial calibration of the reference receiver, and the flatness calibration is done using the now calibrated reference receiver. Alternatively, power meter only 
uses the power meter both for the calibration of the reference receiver as well as for flatness calibration. A third but much less common option is reference receiver only, which performs a flatness calibration using the reference receiver but does not first recalibrate this reference receiver. Calibration is run and results are observed using the power calibration wizard, which is launched by going to start cal and then power cal. There are buttons for each of the three steps in power calibration, namely reference receiver, measurement receiver, and source flatness. To run any of these calibration steps, simply click on the calibration type and follow the prompts. We'll look at each step individually on the next few slides. A green check mark will appear next to each step when it's completed, and the apply button can be used to activate the completed power calibration. Reference receiver calibration involves connecting a power meter to the port being calibrated. This is generally a Rodian Schwartz NRP series RF power sensor. Once the sensor is connected, simply press Start Cal Sweep to run the calibration. This only takes a few seconds to complete. At the top of the power calibration window, a calibration sweep diagram shows the progress of the calibration and the accuracy of the completed calibration. These diagrams are also available for other steps, so the title of each diagram is used to indicate the current calibration step and the measured calibration results. Next, a calibrated source from the reference receiver calibration can be used to calibrate the measurement receiver. This calibration can be performed in two ways, either by connecting an open or short to the port, or by connecting the two ports together. The latter is the preferred method because it provides greater accuracy. As before, press Start Cal Sweep to begin the calibration. Remember that regardless of which method is chosen, open slash port, or connecting the ports together, a source power calibration must be performed first. The final step in power calibration is running source flatness. This can be done either by connecting the DUT to the port or by attaching a match calibration standard. As before, simply press Start Cal Sweep and follow the prompts. After the flatness calibration is completed, the ZNL will perform an additional verification sweep to show the accuracy of the overall calibration. Once power calibration is complete, the status of that calibration can be checked by going to the calibration menu and selecting Active Power Cals. A check mark indicates a successful and active calibration of that type on a given port. If needed, an active power calibration can also be deactivated using this dialog. Power calibration labels appear in the status bar for any power or wave measurements and they provide information about the type and status of any current and active power calibrations. For example, the label PCAL will appear whenever measured correction data is present at each sweep point. If interpolation of the data is being performed, then PCAI will appear as a label. Other labels are possible, so please see the ZNL documentation for a complete list of label types and meanings. Let's end with a brief summary. Rodian Schwartz ZNL Series Vector Network Analyzers support user configurable power calibration, and this is typically performed using an attached NRP Series power sensor. Power calibration is needed when making some types of power related measurements, in particular when measuring gain compression or P1dB. The ZNL supports both aspects of power calibration, namely source calibration and receiver calibration. And the ZNL's power calibration wizard makes it easy to set up, configure, and run calibration. A graphical step-by-step -step guide prompts the user through the process, and power calibration configuration can also be adjusted to account for gain, loss, or frequency-dependent behavior in the test setup. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with a ZNL Power Calibration. If you'd like to learn more about power calibration, power-related measurements, or vector network analyzers from Rodian Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. 
Thanks for watching.